A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to today's session on importance of ultrasound in pregnancy. We would like to welcome Dr. R. Amulya, our in-house consultant for obstetrics and gynecology. She has done her MBBS and MS in OBGYN and gynecologist. We welcome you, doctor. You can now take over the session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, all. This is Dr. Amulya, as introduced. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about the importance of ultrasound in pregnancy. As you all know, ultrasound has become a very important modality of investigation in every pregnant woman. The moment we say ultrasound, one of the most important or major concern which all couple express is they want to know how safe ultrasound is during pregnancy. They want to know is because of this repeated ultrasound examination, is there any harmful effects on their unborn baby? To clarify this question, ultrasound is a safe modality of investigation in pregnancy, which basically is because of the sound waves which are used here, the procedure is considered to be 100% safe. These waves are not radiations the way which is used in X-ray or in CT scan. It's sound waves of slightly higher frequency which are not audible to the human ear, which penetrate through the mother's abdomen, reach the baby and the waves which are reflected back are obtained by the probe and reflected on the screen in the form of an image. So these waves are 100% safe and nothing to worry about. And also, the machines which we use in the present day, the high-end machines which we use in the present day, are manufactured in such a way and the presets are set in such a way that the exposure parameters are kept to the bare minimum in order to make sure that ultrasound procedure is totally safe to the unborn baby. After clarifying that, the next important things which couple generally ask us is how many scans are generally recommended in a routine pregnancy. So, uh, to answer that, the, in, whenever we see a low risk woman, when, our, when I say low risk women, all women with no comorbidities, the one who is not having any diabetes or hypertension or any heart disease or any uh, medical disorder or one with, who is not having any significant obstetric history. I mean to say the one who is not having any first or second trimester abortions in the previous pregnancy no second trimester abortions, no death of the baby in the previous pregnancy. Those pe people who don't have any such history, we consider them as low risk. And we generally recommend five important scans for them. The first being the early pregnancy scan done between six to 10 weeks. Next is the NT scan done between 11 to 13 weeks plus six days. Next is the anomaly scan done between 18 weeks to 22 weeks. Next is the interval growth scan done between 28 to 30 weeks and last is the term growth scan done between 36 to 37 weeks of gestation. Now we shall discuss all this in detail in this particular session. So these are the scans which are done in a low routine, low risk, routine low risk woman. Whenever we do have some sort of history in the mother if at all if the mother is a diabetic or she has a previous baby of cardiac disorder or she has some second trimester miscarriage previous history of short cervix etc we may recommend extra scans apart from the scans which i just mentioned now sticking on to the all the routine scans which we do in a low risk woman first as i told you is the early pregnancy scan which is done somewhere between six to ten weeks or whenever a woman comes to us with a missed period with or without a pregnancy a positive pregnancy test now this scan ep scan the early pregnancy scan is most important because this is something which helps us to localize. Uh, I mean to say it precisely helps us to locate the pregnancy. This is the one which tells, tells us where exactly the pregnancy is implanted or attached. Uh, most of the cases, as you know, it's of course in the uterus and the pregnancy will grow in the uterus. But in about 2% of the cases, the pregnancy can get attached to sites or structures other than the uterus. It can be in the tubes or in the ovaries in 2% of the cases. This is referred to as atopic pregnancy, which can be extremely dangerous if left undetected. Uh, in the human body, uterus is a structure which is actually meant to carry a growing or to accommodate a growing pregnancy. If the pregnancy gets attached to any other structures like tubes or ovaries, etc., as I mentioned before, these structures will not be able to accommodate a pregnancy. So it can eventually rupture and bleed, endangering the life of the mother. So it's very important to an early pregnancy scan and to make sure that the pregnancy is safely attached inside the uterus and not anywhere else. So the first use of early pregnancy scan is to rule out an atopic pregnancy. Once I've ruled out the atopic pregnancy, I come to the uterus to study the pregnancy in detail. I try to see something called as the gestational sac, 
then is the yolk sac i try to see the fetus or the fetal pole i try to see the baby i try to measure the baby i measure the baby by something called a crl that is the crown ramp length which gives me an idea about the growth of the baby or the gestational weeks okay so once i get the gestational weeks that is from the crl i can get the expected date of delivery the edd of the pregnancy now this is what we call as dating of a pregnancy now this becomes extremely important in women who have irregular cycles who can't remember their periods last date or in those women who get pregnant during their lactation amenorrhea when they are nursing their elder kids so we do the scan to date to precisely date a pregnancy now once i see uh, the crl that is the baby i try to see the heartbeat i try to measure the heartbeat and i try to of course show it to the couple and tell them how safe the uh, baby is growing apart from having this especially in the present era where there is increased chances of infertility treatment we always try to rule out something called as ectopic pregnancy sorry multiple pregnancy where there is more than one fetus it can be two or three and sometimes uh, there is it also becomes very important to find out what type of multiple pregnancy it is it's something called as dcta mct it's very important to find out what type of multiple pregnancy it is after this I do have a look at the mother structures i try to see the uterus to see if there is any abnormality in the uterus like you know if there is any polyp if there is any fibroid or any sort of uterine anomalies should be ruled out because these all have obstetric implications they can cause preterm delivery or something called as uh, red redundation of the fibroid which can cause some pain to the mother during her pregnancy i also try to look at the ovaries and the surrounding structures to see if there is any pathology because this is all to be very 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 detailedly seen in the ep scan because later it can get difficult because the pregnancy and the uterus is basically enlarging now once we have a normal ep scan we consult the couple and we call them next for something called as the nt scan the third month scan the nuchal translucency scan or uh, this is a very important scan done at 11 weeks to 13 weeks plus 6 days it's very important to do in this particular window because anything done prior to 11 weeks or anything done after 13 weeks or 6 days are not standardized and the imaging can be suboptimal so it's very important to counsel the couple to come at the stage to get the optimal results or the best results uh, when uh, when you come up to us for an nt scan the baby will be around 5 to 8 cm around 50 to 80 mm a slightly bigger baby when compared to the ep scan so since the baby is slightly bigger we will be able to study some of the structures in detail you know i'll be able to see the head brain i'll be able to see the backbone the skin covering the backbone the two hands and two legs will be carefully uh, if you can see all this we will be able to see the two hands and two legs we'll be able to see the stomach bubble the heart beat the heart rate the basic four chambers of the heart all this can be assessed Okay. now it's very important to see all this and to try to rule out major life threatening abnormalities if any right at the time of nt scan that is right at the third month now once i study the overall structures of the baby the next important thing what i want to see in the nt scan is to rule out the possibility of having any chromosomal or genetic problem or uh, when i do when i do an nt scan i always try to see for any markers of chromosomal abnormality so these markers can be it can be an increased nt it can be an absent nasal bone or any sort of abnormality in the flow pattern of the valves of the heart no all this has to be assessed in detail because they are considered markers of chromosomal problem if these are present they increase or they increase the risk or increase the probability of having a problem if we see all such things we obviously counsel the couple telling that these are not diagnostic they do not indicate that the baby is having a problem it indicates there's increased chances of having a problem so we counsel them the implication of each and every finding and we give them the options of what test can be done next in order to find out if the baby is actually having a problem so the next important use as i said does now is to see the probability of having a chromosomal or genetic problem and if the risk is more to act accordingly so as to save every baby now, apart from having the uh, risk assessment of the baby we also try to see if there is any risk in the mother also we can we, we try to find out if there is increased risk of having preeclampsia that is increased bp in the Uh, increased bp in the mother in the next couple of weeks in her pregnancy that uh, condition is called as preeclampsia which can be predicted right at the time of nt scan by measuring the uterine artery dopplers we will also be able to get an idea if the mother is going to have a low birth weight baby so we will be able to see the structures in detail see the chances <coughs> of having any chromosomal or genetic problem also we will be able to assess the risk of developing complication like preeclampsia and low birth weight 
in the next couple of weeks. At the end of the NT scan, definitely we do try to do an overall survey. We try to measure the cervix very precisely by doing a transvaginal scan. We do have a look at the uterus to see if there is any anomaly and also the surrounding structures that, the, that is the ovaries and the ethnics are. So we, we do a whole survey, we explain all the findings to the couple and implication of every finding and we ask them to do a couple of tests if required or the couple is reassured and sent back. The next scan after the NT scan is as I told the anomaly scan. It's an extremely detailed scan, the most elaborate scan, the most time consuming scan which is done between 18 weeks to 22 weeks. The entire structure of the baby is studied in detail from head to toe. So we start with the head brain, we see the brain in detail, we see each and every component of the human brain. Hello? If it is finished, you can answer. Hmm? Not finished, then, then at last you can. Connection. Hello? So as I think I was discussing about the study of head brain in the anomaly scan. So we do a detailed scan of the head brain. We see the structures of the brain. We see the, something called as anterior brain, posterior brain, the ventricles in the brain. We measure the ventricles. We try to see if the growth of the head brain is normal. We see if there is any sort of abnormalities in the neck of the baby. We come down, we have a look at the thoracic cavity, the chest wall. The, we try to see the structures of the lungs. We study the heart in detail. Now, the study of the heart is something which is extremely important and extremely time consuming because heart per se has to be studied in extremely uh, strict by following the strict protocols given by FMF UK. So we have to wait for something called as a pical position and then only make an attempt to study the heart, the connections, the blood flows through the heart, into the heart, outside the heart, everything will be seen in detail. It's very important to wait till the baby comes to that particular position. After the heart study, I do come down, I look at the tummy of the baby, we try to see the stomach bubble, we try to see the intestines, the kidneys and the urinary bladder. We try to see all the four limbs of the baby, the position of the ankling joint, the fingers. We see the face, we see the side face, we see the eye sockets. We try to look at the lips and the nostrils and all that. So everything in the baby is studied in detail, following strict protocol given by FMF UK. So it, it's extremely time consuming because we have to wait till the baby comes to the precise position required. Now, after studying the structures, uh, we do make an attempt to see the markers of chromosomal abnormalities again. So in the first trimester scan, that is the NT scan, we try to look at the NT thickness. We see the nose bone, something called a side tricuspid Doppler. In the second trimester, again, that is in the anomaly scan, we try to see other markers. There can be something called a CPC in the brain, calcium deposition in the heart, which is called the echogenic intracardiac foci, hydronephrosis. All these can also signify a chromosomal problem. So if we see for, we try to see for all this and we try to explain you the findings, what are the implications and what best can be done to make sure that the baby is fine. Apart from studying the structures and apart from looking at the chromosomal markers, we do have, uh, you know, we try to study the weight of the baby, we try to see the growth of the baby, we try to see the fluid around the baby, the activity of the baby is assessed, whether the baby is moving all the four limbs actively, whether the baby is active, the blood flows to the baby is all active, we studied in detail. Now, once everything is done, the couple are, will be reassured, they'll be counseled what exactly are the findings. And at the end of anomaly scan, there are two important things which I always reiterate the couple. Point number one is that uh, in spite of having an absolutely normal anomaly scan, uh, there are some features which cannot be promised by doing an antenatal scan. That's that we will be able to see the two years, but the hearing capacity cannot be detected in antenatal scans. I can see the two eyes. But the vision capacity is again not uh, something which can be detected or predicted by antenatal scans. The intellectual capacity cannot be commented upon by antenatal scans. So these are the things which the couple need to know that there are certain things which can be detected only after the birth of the baby, which cannot be commented on during the pregnancy scans. And the other important thing which everybody needs to know is that most of the structures are adequately developed by the time we do an anomaly scan, that is between 18 to 22 weeks. However, some of the structures like the head brain, the kidneys, the heart, the intestines and some of the abdominal structures continue to grow. In fact, this develop, their development is principally in the third half 
or the last third months of the pregnancy. So these structures will be developing. And it's quite important for us to reassess all these structures, the head brain, the heart, the intestines, the kidneys, again, when you come back to us for a growth scan. As I mentioned before, the first uh, growth scan that we do in a uh, low-risk woman is uh, between 28 to 32 weeks, which is called the interval growth scan. Uh, as the name indicates, this is basically to see the growth and well-being of the baby. We try to, to give you the weight of the baby. You know, we try to calculate some of the parameters such as head circumference, abdominal circumference, the thigh bone length. We calculate, uh, we measure all these and we try to give you uh, the appropriate gestational weight of the baby. Weight of estimated fifty weight of the baby will be given. We also have a look at the fluid around the baby. The amniotic fluid will be measured, and that will also be given to you. Will be told to you. We also try to study the blood flows to the baby. Blood flows to the baby's brain. Blood flow in the umbilical cord will also be studied, just to give us an idea about the well-being of the fetus. Any sort of uh, variation from normal, if at all, if you feel that the growth trend is increasing or the growth trend is decreasing, the amniotic fluid is too much, or if it is less amniotic fluid, or if there is any sort of variation of the Doppler, that is the blood flows, we do call the mother uh, a couple of days after a couple of days. Now, this can, you know, you know, we can call them after three weeks sometimes we call them after three days sometimes we call them after one week it basically depends on the severity of the problem if there are blood flow abnormality we try to see them early if it is just fluid abnormality we try to see them after two weeks so the next scan principally depends on how exactly your interval growth scan will be now, apart from seeing at the growth i also told you it's very important to reassess the structures especially the head brain the kidneys the heart and the intestines because these are things which are still developing so we try to see all this, especially the kidney, head brain, heart and the intestines. And we try to figure out if there is anything abnormal going on these with structures. It's also very important to understand that around 10% of the anomalies are going to be detected first time in the interval growth scan, especially those involving the heart, something called as coarctation of iota or something called as iotic stenosis, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. These can be detected for the first time in the interval growth scan. It's, it's very important to figure out all this at the interval growth scan because this is basically important to counsel the couple what to expect at the time of delivery. Couple can be prepared in the hospital. We can be prepared as to when to deliver the baby, how to deliver the baby, what should be the mode, what should be the place of delivery and what team has to be ready to receive the baby and to resuscitate the baby as early as possible because that's extremely life-threatening. The conditions can be dealt as early as possible. So in the interval growth scan, again, we look at the growth, we look at the fluid and we reassess the structures again. If everything is normal, the last scan which we generally recommend pregnancy in low-risk women is something which is done at 36 to 37 weeks, which is called a term growth scan, which is principally done to have an idea about the weight of the baby, the position of the fetal head, position of the placenta, and again to have some idea about the liquor and the blood flows. Now, all this has principally some sort of implication on the mode of delivery. So it's quite important to assess the baby again at 36 to 37 to have some idea about the mode of delivery. I hope this information was useful. Uh, can I drink something other than water before an ultrasound? Uh, yeah, so uh, actually during pregnancy scans, we generally don't recommend a full bladder because a baby is surrounded by amniotic fluid and that is that suffices for us. We don't really recommend a full bladder. So even if you don't drink anything, it's okay for us. It's not really needed to have a full bladder. Next question, how reliable are the results of a standard ultrasound scan? Um, I would say the question is quite weak, sorry. If you ask me how reliable is it to chromosomal abnormalities, I would say it is just 75%. Ultrasound is just 75% for chromosomal abnormality. Ultrasound plus biochemistry is 90%. If you want 100%, it is an invasive testing. And how uh, reliable is to assess the structures yeah 90 percent of the abnormalities can be ruled out by ultrasound abnormalities structural abnormalities but not uh, intellectual abnormalities what is the difference what is the difference between sonogram and ultrasound doctor sonogram is sonogram it's the scan ultrasound same thing same. it's the same sonogram ultrasound is same what are the risks of ultrasound during pregnancy doctor there are no risks of ultrasound at all as i told you uh, uh, because the machines, all the presets in the machine are set to the bare minimum, so there is no exposure problem at all. It's 100% safe during procedure. Uh, only if the mother is having high fever, you know, because of uh, some viral or some issues, we generally try to postpone the scan. 
if it is not an emergency but if it is an emergency she has fever and bleeding then she can go ahead with the scan it's not a problem can too many ultrasound hurt the baby no it doesn't it doesn't only when you're having severe fever we ask you to just postpone the scan for a few days until your fever is come around uh doctor what is what is third trimester ultrasound done? yeah third trimester is something which starts between 28 weeks to 37 weeks so at 28 weeks we do something called as interval growth scan at 36 to 37 we do a sperm growth scan basically to see the growth the fluid the blood flows and as i told to reassess the structures again especially at the interval growth scan because the head brain heart kidney intestines they keep developing and it's important to reassess them again can signs of Down syndrome be detected through ultrasound? Uh, uh, ultrasound is basically done to detect markers of Down syndrome. Signs of Down syndrome, uh, no, markers of Down syndrome, because if we see some markers of Down syndrome, we generally advise you to do something more apart from just not ultrasound, because ultrasound will pick up only 75%. So if I see a marker, then chances of it having chromosomal problem would be high so we would ask you to do something which gives us 100 percent information so that can be an ad testing anything called as down syndrome or not any other questions hi doctor that was the last question that we had from the audience doctor okay thanks a lot doctor thanks a lot for answering all the questions patiently Thanks for uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, speaking on the topic today, Doctor. We look forward to having you in more such sessions. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Dear. Thank you.